Harvey Birdman and Black Dynamite lead Pechicucha 17. Uh, we also got a new university brief, the last one of my course that I'm going to get, which is about reportage, which is really a good thing for an illustrator to do. It's it's mostly about reference drawing and it's about, um, you know, Develop, you know, having a style that represents who you are and also the things that happen. So we, we went down the local area, Brick Lane, East London, to try and document the, document the place, the people, get a sense of it. Um, we, you know, we're trying to record not just the visual, but also a bit, bit of the culture, the sound, the smell, the experience. The, you, basically, the deliverables for the brief are to represent the experience of the area in some way, shape or form. Uh, in a in two boxes, one made of kind of analog stuff and one that's representative of digital stuff. So, um, did some people saw a, a Christmas cornflakes packet in in the garbage, which I thought kind of summed up everything quite succinctly. I'm not sure I can bring that forward, but it's a standalone point, so let it stand alone. Uh, Pentel brush pen being used, it, it gives you a good kind of end to these things. Something that interested me rather surprisingly was um, kind of shapes, um, storefronts, the floor. So this this is, um, you'll see the pictures this is, this is from, and I tried to take them out of context and consider could this be some kind of modern art thing that people would, would frame and put on their walls not knowing that really it's nothing of any great significance. So I cleaned it up in um, Photoshop, real simple. Um, I don't know, could someone think this I mean it maybe it looks too much like a window frame kind of it's not it's not abstract enough um, but I, I still think you know it's, it's something that could be played around with and this is the picture you know it's um, can't remember what the shop is particularly it's probably a, some kind of food shop and it's just it's just unusually bright colors you know for the, for the, the surroundings and I found that somewhat interesting because you know and yeah and you know I was I was looking at the floor a lot the floor there's a lot more patterns and details going on uh, than I than I'd actually thought there would be and the idea of abstract abstractifying them seems more interesting than just taking uh, kind of pictures of people going shopping uh, so I kind of took that into uh, Photoshop as well and it's it's because I know what the picture is, it's it's difficult for me to not see it, but I also do see elements of something that could be framed and put on the wall. It really helps when you shift the uh, kind of profile or the landscape of the picture to what, what it isn't. And I found when I, I um, put a darker grey on it, it really does just look like the ground now, and you realise all those circles are actually chewing gum that people have stepped in to, to the uh, the landscape. Uh, maybe there's there's a value in the lack of value in the floor, because that's the, how art works, and there's the actual picture. Funnily enough, um, trying to stand perpendicular to the ground, uh, the lines don't all seem to be so um, you know perpendicular and and um, kind of sort of parallel to each other. There, there there are, I don't know. It just it does seem off. Uh, here we go. Good stuff. Black Dynamite. The movie is awesome. Black exploit black exploitation parody, uh, with that pays homage to the seventies, and is is very very entertaining for me. That has uh, I just found out been turned into a uh, not recently but I just found out a cartoon that uh, definitely to me evokes memory of the Boondocks. While the film is kind of played as a parody, as a spoof. The cartoon is, is is played more straight face, which makes the jokes funny in a different way. Uh, I think a lot of the value of Black Dynamite is that it's in the 70s and it can use like that 70s art style and the music especially. Um, so so it, it gets this, this kind of cultural significance while making its jokes and all of this stuff that I this is the kind of stuff I just love. It's it's placed uh, another thing they do is they, they look at who was famous in the 70s and they can tell jokes that they couldn't have told then now because of the things we know now that we didn't know then. Bill Cosby being a fantastic example of that. Uh, the Bill Cosby impression as well of By the Guy is is ridiculous. 
Uh, another thing in the same kind of vein that I've been binging on, Harvey Birdman, attorney at law, adult swim for the win. Um, I, I think I love everything about this show, the art style, uh, the voice direction, the, the just the audio in, in, in general, the jokes I find very funny. This is, it, well, yeah, let's, let's focus on the intro here. The intro, yeah, this, this also kind of has a 70s feel, uh, very retro, very well done. Um, I would love to do something like this because I could, you know, it's something you can reference heavily because because it's already all happened, hasn't it? And then you can find ways to to try and marry that with sensibilities now. Uh, they, it's about Hanna Barbera characters put in actually entertaining situations for a change. Scooby Doo, maybe the most famous Hanna Barbera characters, getting all the original voice actors to reprise their roles. Not that they stopped because Scooby Doo's still going, but these kind of things, that authenticity adds a lot to, to these um, stories, um, which are very silly. Uh, and usually the endings are somewhat abrupt. Sometimes things have been resolved, sometimes they haven't. Uh, and I love that. Just everybody laughs at the end and, at, you know, next episode, it's like nothing ever happened. That that kind of continuity killing is... is is brilliant and Family Guy. It's brilliant in this. So to do list, uh, you know, new brief with the university. You know, got to try and stay on top of that. Dissertation. Uh, I'm in a good place right now. It'd be good to to get it into a better place. Workshop preparation. We're going to be doing all kinds of, I don't know how complicated things for the brief and involving shoeboxes, animation. Oh, I don't know. It's it's going to be something to just be prepared for, day by day. Uh, mentoring. I'm. I've just met someone who it looks like the path I'm starting off on. They've kind of been doing for a few decades now, and we'll see if it turns from a series of quite enjoyable conversations to something more um, practical and useful in the future. And then maybe so maybe I'll say more about that then, as and when. Uh, practice. I, you know, the life drawing I've had to do this week has reminded me that I don't do life drawing as a rule, and I should because it's the best way to learn how to draw stuff. And then, of course, I have to do all that other stuff: the blog, the old university project. Smiley show still needs a home. You know, you've heard it all before, and I've said it all before. Uh, we'll see what we can do. But that brings us to the end of Petra Kucha Seventeen. See you next time.